it has to be at the level of sci-fi films. Almost like Ready Player One. Have you you read Ready Player One and seen the film? It needs to be that, doesn't it, basically, which is way, way off. A report from Bloomberg suggested that Sony have cut their PSVR 2 forecast following disappointing pre-orders. Um... Ouch. Uh, But they later refuted these claims, telling Games Industry Biz that PlayStation has not cut PlayStation VR 2 production numbers and that it is seeing enthusiasm from PlayStation fans for the upcoming launch, which includes more than 30 titles such as Gran Turismo 7, Horizon Call of the Mountain and Resident Evil Village as well. So you can get a PS5 and you can get a VR headset. The headset is almost as much as the PS5. So what's the accessory? Where do you see VR at the moment, and is it is it dead? People are saying VR is dead. Is it dead? I just I, I think the headsets themselves need to be a lot easier to use that you can just like you can just put it on your face and it works rather than being like there's so many cables and stuff everywhere for you to plug in. And I know certain headsets now are, are, are leading towards that and getting rid of the the cables and all the the, the hassle of kind of setting it up, etc. But I just think the barrier to entry in general just needs to needs to be lower it obviously needs to be cheaper because the headsets are still really really expensive and the issue with with psvr2 i think is that and correct me if i'm wrong but i don't think any of the the old games on the first psvr headset are like backwards compatible like beat saber for example that's correct yeah a, a game that everybody loves on vr when i think vr i just think beat saber and people posting those insane clips of, of them playing that game like Beat Saber isn't a launch title on PSVR 2. Like it's coming later on down the line because they're pretty much going to have to like remake the game for the new headset. Now to me that is just that's just baffling because that that should be a launch title. And if you already own Beat Saber on the first PSVR, you should be able to play it on the new headset, surely. Yeah, um, I think you you make you make a very good point about the point of the price of entry. And I've just been looking on the PlayStation Store, and it is exactly the same price. If you want to buy a PlayStation PSVR two headset, it's five hundred twenty nine ninety nine, um, which is the same as a normal PlayStation uh, console is with two controllers, which seems expensive. But it's so weird with VR, isn't it? There's something called Moore's Law, which I, I don't know if you're familiar with, but it's it's basically about tech. And it basically says Moore's Law is about technology. When new technology comes out, it's expensive because not a lot of people want it. But then as time goes on, technology gets cheaper because it's easier to produce. There's more people buying it. And then the technology gets so cheap that a new technology comes out to replace it. If you look at TVs, for example, how quickly we've gone from how expensive LCD TVs were like even you know, a couple of years ago, they're now dirt cheap. I'm now talking about OLED and QD OLED technology. They're really expensive. In a few years, they'll be cheap as well. With VR, it's always felt really expensive and it doesn't feel like it's coming down at all and it doesn't feel like there's... I think there's so there's, much there's that... experimentation with um, with like the way to do things. So things like the lenses that they use, um, uh, like there's uh, something called pancake lenses, which is slightly different to lenses that we used before that and there's still so much improvement to be made that it, it's it's just not at a point where loads and loads of people can buy it and trust it like there's some people are going to really love vr but how 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 would you put it like if everybody bought a playstation if everybody was given a playstation most people would like it um i would venture to suggest most people would like the experience of sitting down with the controller and playing a game, wh- whether it's uh, whether it's Minecraft or Spider-Man or Call of Duty or whatever. They're going to find a game that they like. With VR, it's very specific to the types of games you can play. And also, the experience is very specific. So, mm. so if you gave everyone a VR headset, everyone would probably try it, but then half the people wouldn't want to play it because it gives them a headache half the people wouldn't want to play it because like it doesn't look quite right half the people wouldn't want to play it because they think the graphics are bad like there's just too much and too many different areas that need improving before it can sort of like reach the mass masses in the same way sort of like video game consoles have um video yeah. go- game consoles have always been really accessible you know ever since ever since the sega master system it's like it's a little box you put under your telly you plug it into something you already own and you play games and they're simple games um that's does it doesn't feel like if you give me a vr headset i'm like cool what do i do with it like i, I still don't know how to set it up and that whole 
change of the experience of what we're so used to. I think for a lot of people, it's just too, it's just too much to 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 comprehend, and the reward isn't big enough. Yeah. Maybe not comprehend. I think, I I think that's an, uh, not yeah. a nice word. Like people would understand it, but it's too much like setup yeah. for for yeah. for the reward you get back. Yeah, I think for me, VR's always felt a bit of a gimmick. Like you said, like you you get it and you play it for a bit, and then you just go back to your normal experience. Like I've had a, um, a really good experience actually playing F one twenty two in, in VR. Um, it didn't work that well initially, but after a few updates and optimizing and everything like that, it works really really well. But there's just something about the experience. It, obviously, it's the immersion and everything which you don't you can't get from playing the game normally. But there's just that that bit of it's just not. It's just a little bit blurry mm. to where you want it to be, and unless the technology gets to a stage where it's undif- or you can't differentiate between looking at a monitor and looking in a VR headset, I just don't think it will get there because you're always gonna want that crisp experience. Especially, you know, we've got 4K monitors now, we've got 8K TVs. Um, people want that kind of crispness in the in the image, and it just feels like even even with the MetaQuest Two, which I've got. Um, which is, you know, three hundred and fifty pounds. I think. I think it went up in price recently. The bit of blur just kind of ruins that experience for me. Um, and unless uh, we've got a few comments uh, from Shogun, for example, I don't think it'll take off. It's, it's absolutely incredible, and it still has so far to go. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. I feel like it needs to be sensational for it to even even get there. Um, like I've had family members who are, I take my VR headset to and I'm like, oh, shit, like, look at this, how cool is this? And they'll they'll be on it for um, five minutes and they'll be like, oh yeah, that was cool. And then like, no, no interest after. It's like a short-term gimmick that you wouldn't want to kind of live with. Um, it's almost like uh, an accessory, isn't it, to, to a console rather than absolutely. a new system itself. Like VR needs to get to the stage where you know, a, a parent is looking to buy a new video game system for their for their kid at Christmas, and the first thing that comes to their mind is a VR headset. Whereas at the moment, yeah. they just think a PlayStation or an Xbox or a Nintendo yeah. Switch or something. They don't the VR headset are, the VR headsets aren't seen as like a console that has its own rich ecosystem and and things like that. It's just seems it's it seems like a, an accessory that's just you can add yeah. that to a pre existing traditional video game console. Yeah, and if people aren't buying the VR headsets, which is what the report seems to suggest, even though Sony refuted it, um, their, their their actual statement didn't say, didn't actually refute the rumours that the production that the demand was cut. They just they just said something about the production will might remain the same, which doesn't quite answer the same question. But if people don't, if people aren't buying the VR the VR headsets. What, why would the developers spend so much time with these games, optimizing their games for VR? If there's no, if there's going to be no one to buy it on that platform, I suppose is, is the question. But we've got a few, a few comments on this really interesting topic. Uh, Willow says uh, VR Warzone. Now that would be a game. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I don't know. How you feel I did about see. That, I did I'd see. Be, the I'd other be trying day. to run on the spot yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in a VR headset, I, thinking, "Why am I moving so slow?" And, well, I think that's the thing with VR headsets is that for FPS games, there's going to be a real struggle because yeah. you can't move around. Mm. You need a real big open space for that to work. You couldn't use it at home, which is which is one of those things. You probably, like you said, Tom, running on the spot, you probably move as fast anyway. Uh, <laughs> with the VR session, I, the I game. saw something the other um, day, um, and it was basically uh, it was like an AR game, like, um, and it was like a home invasion, and it was an FPS, yeah, not not it was a first person shooter, um, and there was basically people trying to break into your house, but it was it was all obviously augmented reality. And you had to sort of go around your own house and and like pick people off, and that that looked cool. Like I I give that a crack. That seems like mm. it could be fun. But it's it, I think like a lot of this uh, a lot of the struggle is for things like where you want to go and explore, right? You 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 can't actually walk around these spaces because you're in your home. Um. So until there's like the ability to have a multi-directional treadmill or or whatnot like that is accessible with because there's so many accessories that would need to come with a vr experience to make it believable or to immerse you deeper and if you're just say 
you 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 know is you're exploring a, a a landscape and you can't walk around it it just doesn't feel like you're exploring a landscape to me it just feels like you're hovering around a game which i can do looking at a screen and i i get that it's like a, a slightly more immersive because i can turn my head and like look over there and and whatnot but <laughs> Thanks, thanks for showing showing us. Yeah, that just in case you guys didn't <laughs> yeah. know, uh, you can like turn your head and stuff, and there's stuff behind you that you can see. And but but it's not enough. Like you have mm. to be fully immersed. Like Shogun was saying, it has to be at the level of sci-fi films, like where you feel fully immersed, like that Star Trek holodeck sort of, you know, that sort of almost thing like is... Ready Player One. Have you have you read exactly. Ready Player One? Yeah. Or seen the yeah. film? Yeah, it needs yeah. to be that, doesn't it? Basically, which is way way off. Thank you.